Title 42 expires tomorrow night. The Trump policy was used to expel migrants during the pandemic for health reasons, but now it is ending and officials are on edge. President Biden even predicting chaos at the border as towns are already seeing the warning signs of a potentially enormous influx of criminal activity and a new wave of migrant crossings. Arizona is on the front lines of this fight. And new tonight, Border Patrol agents and U.S. Customs officers in Nogales say they're seizing the most fentanyl pills and powder out of anywhere in the entire country. Fox 10's Stephanie Bennett takes us on a ride along across Santa Cruz County. So actually right here, um, once we hit this road right here, you'll actually uh, probably see them. Alejandro Alverde has been a Border Patrol agent in Texas, New Mexico, and now Nogales, Arizona, for the last 14 years. And lately, he's noticed a change. It's always been busy here, uh, but what is unusual is all the people that are just coming in to turn themselves in. It's something that we're not, you know, used to. It's not, it didn't ever used to happen. Alverde says in Mariposa Canyon, anywhere from 100 to 200 people illegally cross through these gaps in the border wall every single day. We came across this group of six wanting to seek asylum. Yeah, four, we're right here in green on the road just to the, uh, the east. Agents say spotters, usually teenagers, sit on the mountains in Mexico, watching the agents in Arizona's every move, waiting for the right opportunity to send people across. That's very busy. Um, we do have certain spots that get hit the most, um, but basically a normal agent would just go out to the field and get a, an assigned area. A lot of the people, if you go out further west, then they do uh, like drags on um, the dirt roads. That pretty much allows them to know like if somebody crossed right there, um, it, if, if it was a fresh drag, then they'll be able to actually see that, you know, somebody crossed and it's pretty fresh. He says many want to turn themselves in as they're seeking asylum, running away from violence in their home countries. They're called the give up groups. But the other half, he says, want to evade capture. The give up groups, we, we are seeing uh, people as young as just infants, uh, one year olds, uh, with usually the people that are not trying to claim asylum. It's usually from 15 all the way up to you know, 60 year olds. Title 42 was created by the CDC during the pandemic to help stop the spread of COVID-19, while also allowing Border Patrol agents to expel migrants who crossed into the U.S. What it uh, uh, allowed us to do, for the most part, if somebody came in without a visa, uh, they were returned to, uh, to Mexico. Uh, when Title 42 lists, and that was irregardless. Now, uh, some were still allowed in, you know, um, unaccompanied uh, uh, children, for example, uh, high risk uh, for abuse in another country. The Biden administration will lift Title 42 on May 11th, which is praised by some but feared by others. Many politicians and law enforcement agencies across the southwest border saying they need some sort of replacement to help combat the flow of people illegally crossing the border as things are expected to get much worse once it's gone. The Biden administration announcing earlier this month that they plan to send 1,500 troops to help in these already busy communities. So we have to balance all our resources. Um, you know, we're confident in our ability to do that. But at some point, if we have issues with post-fight Title 42, you know, that might start affecting wait times and the number of vehicle lanes open to be able to process people or travelers coming into the U.S. Over at the ports of entry, U.S. Customs and Border Protection officers enforce over 400 laws and 40 different federal agencies, not only stopping illegal activity at the border, but also ensuring produce and other products in the supply chain are crossing in a safe and timely manner, which means they're checking every train and every semi-truck on top of their other duties fighting crime. I believe yesterday we got close to 1,800 semi-tractor trailers uh, uh, come in through here. Uh, last month, we were bringing in about 27 million pounds of produce a day. Out of all the ports of entry across Arizona, including those at airports and land crossings like these, the ones in Nogales are the busiest. Somewhere up around 30,000 a day. Officers are not only using old school methods like mirrors and canines, but new technologies like these scanners to x-ray vehicles to help keep everything flowing. A lot of this, you know, it isn't open the trunk and there, oh, fentanyl. It's, you know, deep concealment in voids and kind of cars 
uh, in all kinds of cars, in trains and semi-tractor trucks, on bodies and inside of bodies, and in the drive shaft doors, uh, airbag compartment, uh, air filter compartment, bumpers, floors, roofs, uh, you name it, tires, uh, gas tanks. The DEA sees more than 22 million fentanyl pills in Arizona last year alone. That's about half the national total, and the main entry point was right here in Nogales by the Sinaloa cartel. We lead the agency right now as far as uh, seizures of fentanyl pills. We've exceeded uh, well over 28 million uh, fentanyl pills approximated uh, here at the Port of Nogales. 28 million fentanyl pills in the last six months alone. A Nogales port director, Michael Humphrey, says that's more pills than the last five years combined total. Five, six years ago, fentanyl, uh, you know, what is that, you know? Uh, and, and we got small, small amounts. It's grown incrementally every year, you know, until you, this year it's just through the roof. This is, uh, it's almost a daily occurrence. Officers say, unfortunately, fentanyl is easy to make, transport, and sell for a good profit. As demand grows, addiction is skyrocketing. To help tackle the growing workload, they're offering up to $20,000 in bonuses for new agents. Not only is it their job to secure everything coming into the U.S., but also leaving the country. We're seizing uh, high-powered rifles, assault rifles. Uh, the other day, we got uh, 19,000 rounds of AK-47 assault rifle ammunition going into Mexico. For now, it's a waiting game to see what comes after Title 42 ends. But these guys say they'll be ready. It's a very rewarding field, even though right now it's kind of complicated. Um, you know, at the end of the day, it's very rewarding. You know, security for your family.